Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our first lab exercise on raster analysis. And here we're going to see how to generate an aspect raster from a DEM using the Surface Parameters tool. We'll also review how ArcGIS symbolizes aspect rasters. And for those who are unfamiliar with aspect, this is just a data set where every cell value shows the compass direction that cell is facing. If the cell is on the south facing slope of a hill, then the aspect of that cell will be somewhere around 180 degrees. We generate an aspect raster from a DEM or a digital elevation model raster. And after you've created the aspect raster, there's several ways that you can analyze it. Aspect can be tricky since it's a circular variable. Now, if you're interested, take a look at the second lecture video in this module for a discussion of how you can use aspect in your analysis and your management plans. And in this demonstration, I'm going to be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.1. Now, for those of you taking my classes at Northern Arizona University, you're going to use this aspect raster later for your homework. So just be, you know, don't delete it once, you, once you've got it created. Now, before we start, there's a few things we should always consider before calculating aspect. First, which tool are we going to use? Currently, ArcGIS Pro has two tools that will calculate aspect. There's one just called the aspect tool, and there's another called the surface parameters tool. So depending on which tool you use, you got to consider different issues. So if you're using the original aspect tool, then you, if your DEM is in geographic or latitude longitude coordinates, you must use geodesic methods to calculate aspect. Otherwise, the data is going to be wrong. But if you're using the surface parameters tool, then you don't need to worry about it. The surface parameters tool automatically uses geodesic methods. And this lab exercise is going to demonstrate it using the surface parameters tool. Now, the next issue is, are your DEM elevation units the same as your XY coordinate system? If they're different, you know, say if your elevation units are feet and your coordinate system is in meters or degrees, well, then you'll need to specify the correct elevation units when running the tool. Actually, this is less important for the aspect analysis than it is for the other surface parameters outputs. It's just landscape direction is still going to be the same regardless of your elevation units, but it's still good practice to know what your units are and to enter the appropriate value in the tool. Speaking of elevation units, the Surface Parameters tool also checks to see if your DEM has elevation units recorded in the metadata. It warns you if you don't. And it'll give you this little message about vertical elevation units. And if you're interested, I have a discussion of this issue in a separate video if you like. It's not going to stop us here on this lab exercise, though. Okay, let's get started now. First thing, the aspect tool is available in one of the ArcGIS extensions, actually available in a few of them. We're going to use the Spatial Analyst extension for this, so I'm going to first thing make sure we have that turned on. So that's in the project, come down to Licensing, come down here and check for Spatial Analyst, and I happen to have it turned on. If you don't, then you'll just need to hit the configure your licensing options and turn it on yourself. Okay. Next up, let's add the data. We're going to add this DEM here. It's a 10 meter resolution elevation raster near Flagstaff and just a analysis unit that we we'll use for further lab exercises. Okay. I have them in the class data folder in the folder called raster functions. So we're going to load this one and this one. Add it into the map. Now, if you recall that from the beginning of this video, there's a few things you should be thinking about when you're going to create an aspect data set. First off, what is it a projected or a geographic data? And what are the linear units of it? So let's see how to do that. Uh, we find it in the properties of the layer. We just double click on that, open up the properties in the source tab. Is it projected or geographic? We come down to spatial reference. The fact that it has anything about a projected coordinate system means that it is projected. So this is a projected data set. It's not going to be dependent on geodesic calculations, even though the tool we use will use geodesic automatically. Uh, what is the linear unit? Is this in meters or feet? Well, we come down to linear unit and it's in meters. So the X and Y units are in meters for this. Now I happen to know that the elevation units are in meters as well, so we're good on that. 
But uh, this is something that you should know about your own data. Is it in feet or is it in meters? Now, if we wanted to know what the resolution of, it, of the raster is, we could also find that here. It's in the still in the source tab. Come up to raster information. Resolution is right here, the cell size X and the cell size Y. So it's uh, 9.3 meters horizontal and 9.3 meters vertical. So that's how big the raster cell is. All right, so it's, uh, it's projected data. It's in meters. So we're ready to run the tool now. Now, like I said, uh, we have two tools available to us. We're going to use the surface parameters tool. So just come to tools, type in surface parameters like I have here. We're going to do the spatial analyst version of it. I'm going to load up the DEM right into the input surface raster. We get this little warning that says the uh, input data set doesn't have vertical units. Uh, I, I, I have a video explaining this and what you can do about it if you want to. Right now it's just a warning, so it's not going to stop us from doing the analysis. So as long as we can tell it, we know that it's in meters, then we'll be fine. And also, you know, Aspect doesn't really need to know the units. Uh, the direction the landscape faces is not really dependent on the units, and so we have to enter it just because it's something the tool requires for all the options. So we're, we're calculating aspect. It's in meters. We're going to leave it as quadratic surface type. We're not going to use an adaptive neighborhood. We're not going to use geodesic azimuths or equatorial aspects. In fact, we're all set up to go. Oh, let's change the name to aspect so we know what we're dealing with. All right. All that's good. We hit go. Okay, and there we go. Now we have an aspect raster. Notice that it initially symbolizes the data by all these categories. So it's, it's got eight categories for the direction, and it has a separate category in case it's flat landscape and isn't facing any direction except straight up. That happened like in a lake or in a flat meadow. Now, this kind of gives the impression that it's produced a categorical raster, but it's really not. Uh, it's, it's a continuous raster, and we can change the symbology just to demonstrate this. If we change it from classify to stretch, there we go. So now it's just shading from black to white, going from 0 degrees to 359 degrees, or so basically going around the compass. So it is a continuous data set. Um, now, you may prefer the classified symbology, or you may prefer this. If you want the classified, uh, recent versions of ArcGIS Pro will know that this is an aspect data set. And if you just add that back, so you go to the database where you got the data. Here's aspect. If I load this as its own new layer, ArcGIS knows its aspect and will re-symbolize it this way. All right, and that's all there is to it. Thanks so much, everybody. Our next lab exercise, we'll see how to do this with slope, and then we'll continue on with several other surface measures.